Hey, how's it going? So today we are embarking on an adventure. An adventure that's gonna last about 12 days. And that's gonna be, a, I mean, across four different countries for four different shoots. So yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna basically take you around the life of a, an FPV pilot that's doing that for a living, a professional, if you will. So yeah, let's go. All right, so let me tell you a little bit about all this. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because I kind of want to show you the kind of the behind the scenes of everything that I do for work. And also because I've been getting a lot of questions about it. So I thought it would be kind of a good way to just look at it through the insider's perspective, basically. Um, so in this one, we're going to go first in Ukraine to Kiev. So that's what we're doing now. It started pretty early on that day, 2.53 to be exact. No time to waste. I grabbed my bag, down the elevator, onto the Uber, and arriving at the airport, I realized how early it is because this airport is absolutely empty. I go straight to the plane, and that's a very slough plane with critical basics. We take off, I reach to Kiev, at the hotel, I realized that my room is really, really nice, and that's great. Since I'm not going to be working until late in the evening, and it's the morning, I take some time just to Netflix and chill. This happens quite a lot. Sometimes you will be sent somewhere, and you won't work until the evening, so you kind of have to keep busy. What I do sometimes is just edit or do some stuff. Now passing on the mic to Finky from the past. So that's kind of what we're working with today. Uh, basically, it's for an ad and uh, it, there's a drone racing scene. So they, they suited me up as a, as a drone racer and uh, that's, what, that's what we're doing now. Uh, yeah. The track looks funny and with all these... On this shoot, I also acted as a bit of a consultant to help them out, set up the track, make sure that it was actually flyable and that it looks like pretty legit and it did even though it was a bit challenging to fly in such a small environment but i think it looked great in the end all right so on this shot you're going to get a better picture of what's going on here basically at the back over there is the director and right next to him is the director of photography the director of photography holds the camera and decides for most of what the picture is going to be like uh, on the left uh, there's me and two other guys these guys are actors uh, pretending to be uh, FPV pilots and I was here acting as the FPV pilot while flying as well and on the right you've got a group of three Ukrainian racers that came here for the shoot to fly actual drones so first we did a bit of hovering where the idea was to get the drones with us in the background flying and then we started on to flying uh, unfortunately I can't really show that to you because it's not uh, released yet but basically what I was in charge of doing was to fly uh, as the racer and filmer at the same time while the other ones were just uh, flying and I was trying to make it look like a competition between all of us uh, with like crashes and uh, all kinds of stuff overtaking um, so yeah that's basically what happened we've got the UDR team from Ukraine here uh, nice. uh, do you want to introduce yourself guys? yeah yeah Alex. I'm Alexander Aloshin <laughs> I'm Ivan Alinik, one of the races. <laughs> I'm Dmitry Aksyonov. Awesome. Uh, you might recognize them from something. There were, uh, some of them actually were part of the Rotary episode about Chernobyl. Is that right, yeah? Yeah? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, uh, yeah, these were, these were my uh, co-pilots opponents for the day. And uh, now that everything went pretty well, it's a wrap, I think. I just have to take off these clothes and uh, say goodbye to these guys. And it was really nice meeting you. Thanks for the stickers, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you too. See you. Thanks. <laughs> After that long evening, it's about 11 in the evening and I have to go back to the hotel because I'm taking off at three in the morning back to the airport. Three hours later, I'm well rested. I wake up and I'm like, hey, that's not, that wasn't that bad. I, I woke up pretty easily, right? So I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to check out my phone real quick. So I check out the phone and what feels to me 10 seconds after that, the phone rings. And it's actually the receptionist from the uh, hotel telling me that my driver has been waiting for 15 minutes. I look at the clock. 
what felt to me like 10 seconds was actually 45 minutes. I had fallen back to sleep and I completely overslept. I've never felt like a time traveler that much. So now my driver is just sending it down Kiev and make it to the airport. It's perfect, just in time for a little smoke break before the plane goes. From the plane, I look at my luggage that's all alone on the tarmac and I really, really hope that someone's gonna take care of it because no one seems to care about it. Oh God, they took it, that's great. I arrive home in Paris, I take a quick shower and back onto the Uber for the next shoot. Arriving at the next shoot, you might recognize something from it. So today we're shooting a video for a martial arts gym with this little guy. And uh, yeah, basically we're just gonna shoot rehearsal today and today tomorrow is the big shoot. So that team was pretty massive. We had like, over 20 extras and then the team of people working around, it was about 10 people, including the director, the art director, the assistant. Uh, I mean, lots and lots of people working on that project, which was a really cool experience. So that day we spent a little bit of time rehearsing before the big day, which was on the next day. This last bit actually gave birth to the latest video you may have seen on my channel. Um, it, it's a video that we put a lot of effort into and I'm so pleased about the response from everyone. So I wanted to show you a little bit of how it went down on the next day, the actual shooting day. That day was dedicated to rehearsing, the one that we just saw. We rehearsed the movements to make sure that everything would work, everything would fit. And then after that, on the next day was the actual shoot day where everything had to go right. And uh, so what we did is that we basically cut the days in two halves. The first half of the day would be dedicating to the part that we actually see in the end. And the second part of the day would be dedicated to the part that uh, you see in the beginning of the video. Um, so uh, what happened is that we did that because we had to uh, accommodate people for their uh, planning and their agenda. They couldn't stay all of them the whole day in terms of, I mean, these martial artists, they just came here to do the video like graciously. So we couldn't, we couldn't take too much of the time. It was a lot of questions as well regarding the video and I'm gonna try to answer them right now. Uh, basically, we combine handheld movements with uh, actual flights from the squirt and there is only one cut in the video as you are going to see now from the behind the scenes. So, uh, once they salute, uh, the girl gets up and uh, she's, got the, she's got the squirt around her neck and then the one guy picks it up and turns and that's when the squirt takes off and then as the, the, the squirt moves forward, everyone comes out, and every time we go around someone, that person actually leaves the frame. So up oh, there we go, another person that's left, and then onto the fighting. And here we spin it really fast so that we can go forward, and then we keep going. As we keep going, uh, that guy actually at the back was supposed to be here to make sure of the alignment of the Aikidokas at the end. And also in the real shot that we use, he actually picked up the drone uh, to make a more, like to make it simpler for everyone to kind of frame and do for the very last movement that you're seeing right now. And that was done for Cercle Letitier, uh, which is a, a martial arts gym in Paris. Um, it, was, it was a lot of work, but I'm so pleased by the way it actually came out and uh, these these guys that came up to me with that project had like such a good idea and I was really impressed by it so that's why I decided to go and work with them it was it was just a really great project they really understood the whole situation and how um, and how we could make something great with the FPV drone and uh, that was great so big shout out to Romus Palmer the director also Farid uh, Malki, uh, the art director, and everyone that worked on that project. There is a list in the description of the actual video if you want to go and check it out. Uh, everyone did a fantastic job and I'm so pleased that I was part of that project. Are you tired already? Because it's just the third day and we still have 10 days to go. Yes, so <laughs> on the next day, right after that shoot, I took off and went to Norway. So I had another one. Then 
uh, I took this first plane where there was no one in the first three or four rows except me, which was super, super weird, but kind of funny at the same time. And um, then once I arrived in Norway, I was, I mean, taken away as usual. It's such a cool place. It's such, so much, so much beauty over there. I arrived in the room in uh, Gerhanger, which is a fjord in the south, well, east, west of Norway. Beautiful place. And uh, I just, I mean, the room was just breathtaking. On the next day, we shot some stuff with Tom Eric Ryan that you may remember from the shoot, uh, the skate video in California. Um, so yeah, we went down, we did a little bit of downhill. Um, and then on the same day, we actually found this really cool cliff to uh, do some shots on. So we took, took a bunch of shots over there and I took a really cool one that I'll show you. The next day we had to go to a different place in Norway. So we took a ferry to go there and enjoy the view. Uh, after a long drive and we just went to sleep on that day we went on to another ferry uh, another really cool view as well uh, and then we drove down to meet with a guy called uh, Trosp, Trolls something like this uh, he's doing Dotsin which is basically belly flopping the Norwegian version of belly flopping it's super extreme so we went there and we and he kind of we, we we got a few shots uh, that I posted on my Instagram. You may remember these. I, I mean, it was it was so fun to shoot with them that way because I mean it's something that you don't see every day. Guys jumping from twenty two meters and just belly flopping on purpose. It's it's pretty crazy. Um, the day after, it was another early morning we woke up at one in the morning and to hike for about two hours to reach a very famous stone called Prekestolen. Stolen and uh, that's the famous uh, flat squarish stone uh, and we went there to take that shot And after that, it was back home in Paris, and it just felt great to be back home. Uh, but we had on to move on to the other shoot that was supposed to be in Portugal to shoot a rap music video. But it turns out that one got cancelled, and <laughs> it's actually great for the for for, for this little story because this really shows you a clear picture of what I mean an FPV professional does every day and this is actually part of what happens a lot of time sometimes you'll have cancellations i'm not going to get into the details of the why in this cancellation but yeah it just it just happens from time to time you get some stuff that is booked and then uh, all of a sudden it's not anymore uh, it's something that you have to prepare for what i do is that until i'm not in the plane i don't or at least I have like the plane tickets. I think it's not going to happen. Even happened recently that I even even after all this, I still thought I wouldn't go. <laughs> even when I was there, I still thought it wouldn't it wouldn't happen somehow. But yeah, this is part of the things that you have to prep for, especially if you're really interested in this job. Just think about it, and I mean, don't stress too much over it. And that is basically it for this little tour of the behind the scenes of um, I mean, what it's like to be a professional FPV drone pilot. Uh, the reason why I wanted to show you this is because uh, I get this comment quite a lot about the living the dream thing and it's, uh, it's true, it's definitely a dream and it's, it's something that uh, I'm so grateful about and I'm so happy that I can do every day now. Um, but it comes with a lot of 
other things that you have to think of. It's not about just ripping packs on packs on packs every day. You actually fly even less than you do when you're just a hobbyist. Uh, but the real thing is that it's also going to be a lot of late nights, early mornings, a lot of hurry up and wait, a lot of walking sometimes for four hours um, to take one shot. Uh, sometimes it's going to be uh, cancellations. Sometimes it's going to be time away from your family. So if you are interested in doing this, um, just just know uh, what you're getting into. It's it's not just going to be all like ripping packs with your friends all the time. It's actually going to be quite a lot of work. And uh, but with that said, I wouldn't exchange it for anything else in the world. I love what I do and I hope to do a lot more in the future. And turns out this was not even my longest uh, streak of just like working seven days a week for, for, for a long time. I recently did uh, 15 days of working non-stop like that uh, with basically work, waking up every day around three and, and doing a lot of, of, of stuff across like different countries as well. Um, but this will be I and mean, then revealed in another video maybe. Um, so yeah, um, here it is for this one. I hope that you liked it. I hope that you enjoy that format. Maybe I'll do a bit more of these behind the scenes kind of things. Let me know in the comments if you like it. See you next time. Bye-bye.